Hello, also in this video, we are going to see how can we fetch or query metadata information from IICS. And as part of that, we are going to see three things particularly. That is how can we fetch all the connection information from our environment? How can we fetch all the mappings from our environment? And how can we fetch all the mapping tasks from our IICS environment? Now the difference between IICS and Thor Center, uh, particularly for this metadata information fetching is, when we used to install Thor Center on our uh, on-premise environment, it used to create a separate database and various metadata tables under that database and also the views. Now, uh, when it comes to Power Center, uh, in uh, re uh, repository, uh, Power Center repository manager, we used to they they have given the provision to query the uh, all that metadata information direct from repository manager. Also, if we know the those tables and views, uh, we could have directly used T, T SQL and fetch the fetch that particular metadata information. However, for IICS, we don't uh, install anything, right? All that environment is already available in somewhere in Informatica cloud. Now, that's the reason why like we do not have access to that database directly and even we don't know all that metadata information like the tables and views. So, uh, how can we face that? So, uh, ISIS has given the or Informatica has given the provision to pull that information using APIs. So, let me go back to the documentation which they have provided. So, this is the main documentation page for uh, data integration REST APIs. Now, if you look at this, right, in the documentation, what they have written is the REST API resource in this section apply specifically to data integration service. And that is exactly what we are looking for. All that connection mapping, mapping task information, uh, which we are supposed to query is part of data integration. All right. For most of the calls, use data integration REST API version to resource. When you use data integration REST API version to resource, note following rules, okay? Use JSON or XML format. Use the server URL value from login response. So note this point particularly. So we'll have to first log in, that's the first step. So once you log in, it will give us the server URL information, okay? Use the following URL. So that is API, that is version two and the API name and use the following request header, following request header format. So this is the method, either get or post. This is the server URL. And as you can see, it's in a bracket. So it varies. Uh, then URI and HTTP methods, okay? Then content type, access and session ID. Again, this is also varies, okay? So here, there are two things uh, which we should have. First is server URL and second is session ID, okay? So if we have that information, then we can use different APIs, okay? So the very first thing is, how can we get this server URL or the session ID? So for that, what they're saying is, use the login response, okay? So how can we get that login response? So if I expand this guy, there is a separate API for login. So let me, I guess I have opened it here. Let me anyway open it. Let me close this. If I go back to this login API, there is a separate documentation for it. Okay, so this is a post request, first of all, and this is the URL which we are supposed to use. If I scroll down, this is the example they have given. So the, it depends, it, it changes based on your, uh, which URL we are using here, right? So uh, this is the API we have to use. Okay, it's again a post request, correct? And if I scroll down, they have also given the example. So this is a post request, okay? Uh, these are the parameters we are supposed to pass in the body, okay? This is the uh, header information we're supposed to pass. So what I will do, I have already copied this thing, all these things in this uh, notepad. So this is the URL, okay? And this is the information I'm going to pass. Now. This is my user and this is my password. You don't have to use this password because after this video, I'm going to change this password anyway. So for time being, I will... Now again, so one thing which I forgot is in order to call all these APIs, right? We need to have some tool. So the very freely available tool is Postman, okay? So if you Google it, you can uh, 
you will get the URL and uh, you can download it for free. Okay, you, you can use this for free. Now if I will again go back and copy this URL, maybe I will create a new one. It's a post request. Okay, now under header, we are supposed to pass, let me go back to the documentation. This is a content type. and accept so content type is application or JSON and it accepts application in JSON perfect and under body we supposed to pass user ID and password raw and JSON okay and it's a post request and if i click send it will return us the json object now if i go back to the documentation what it says is uh, the the server url from the login response so this is our login response okay this was the login api and that this is the response so if i scroll down i will get that server url and session id i will let me copy this guy Okay, I got these uh, values from login response. Let me go back. Once we have that right, then we can use any API. Now, as per our documentation, so let me go back. Let's find out all the mappings available in our environment, ICS environment. So what I will do, um, let me go to the mappings. Okay, and so this is the API. So there are different way, uh, APIs as well and when it comes to mapping search. So our uh, intention is to find out all the mappings available under our environment. So for that, details of all the mappings in the organization. So we have to use this API. If I go very end, I will. they have given the example. So this is the server URL slash API v2 mapping. So what I will do, that's my server URL, right? Okay, so this is the URL I will have to use. Okay, so I will go back, create a new one. And now it's a get, right? It's a get method. And I will have to pass two header information, accept and session ID. Now, as you can see, for the first one is a constant. And this one right this this varies session id now when we logged in uh, by api it created the session and it returned us the session id i will copy this guy and i guess that's all okay so if i hit send okay now it returned me it gave me uh, some yeah, it gave me the response. Okay, let me copy this response. Okay. And as you can see, it gave me a uh, different mapping. So under mapping, okay, this is not that easy to read. Okay, let's do this way only. So this is the first mapping, DSTT copy data existing TGT. Now let me go back to my environment and let's see if that particular mapping exists. So this is where I am and let me go to all bundles. There are two different folders under that. The first one has four mappings. So let's see, this is the one, second, so that called DSTT copy data existing TGT, DSTT copy data existing TGT, perfect. What was the first one? DSTT copy data existing TGT. It's the same, okay. DSTT copy data new TGT. I guess this is the one, DSTT copy data new TGT. DSTT copy data new TGT. DSTT copy data with lookup existing TGT. new TGT, I guess this is from 
look up new digit I guess this one yeah and this is the one which I have created M Java transformation and created by my ID so if I go back Uh, defaults Java transformation okay and it created on 24th Jan 24th Jan okay it also has version after that there is another called Java transformation that must be in different folder if I go here yeah Java transform transfer transpose okay this is Java transpose so there are multiple mappings under that pass through mapping that is this one and there is another mapping there are more static lookup and absurd so let's see that's the static lookup and that's the last one absurd that's all okay so as you can see there are uh, mapping task and task flow as well but this one doesn't have that information because we specifically queried for mapping information now let me go back so there was another task which we are supposed to do was get the uh, connection information so for that so this is the URL for that documentation if I check this one oops sorry not this one so we just have to use v2 after that connection so if I go back and instead of mapping if I use connection okay now the header information will remain same we still have same session and if I hit send again it's a get method it's a get request I mean okay it's a get request and it will return us the uh, JSON object and that has connection information now so as you can see I have only one connection called on prim SQL server okay on prim SQL server so let's validate that yeah it's just one uh, it's of ODBC type and the connection name is on prim SQL server so let me go back and find out so let me go to administrator and connection what happened it is slow looks like why can't I see why don't I see any connection information here I do have one connection let me log out and log in and <laughs> uh, administration yeah on-prem SQL server and it's of ODBC type okay I don't know what happened there last time but yeah on prim sql server and created by me and it's of odbc type perfect and the last one which we are supposed to check is get the mapping task so if i go back to the documentation again so the api which we supposed to use is uh, m task okay and get response yeah m task and id it's optional 
okay so if I use only M task it should work that should give me all the that this is all uh, response information and let me go to very end delete post yeah I guess empty task okay let's try so let's first see how many mapping tasks are available in my environment I guess only one and if I go to explore YouTube folder yeah it's only one let's see I'll use this M task so instead of connection I will just use M task if I scroll down yeah M static lookup insert update empty static lookup insert update yeah that's the one okay so only one mapping task present so uh, let me reiterate what we did so uh, there are separate APIs like for each information we supposed to find so for connection there is a connection v2 slash connection for mapping it's v2 slash mapping and to get mapping task there is something called v2 slash mapping task now the uh, the first part of this URL entire URL so this it's kind of like server it changes based on your environment and then API right and uh, we are supposed to pass uh, session ID in the header okay so these two things like server and session ID how we'll get that so to in order to get that server information and session ID information you have to use this uh, this a uh, login API so all these are get uh, methods and this is a post one the post API okay because like get in the sense here we are fetching the information here also we will like uh, we uh, fetch the information like when we pass these values we authenticate to the server it gives us this uh, uh, URLs like uh, it gives us these values server URL and session ID and what all information we supposed to pass to this login API is your username and password all right so thanks for watching this video and in the next video we'll see how can we trigger a API okay using uh, sorry how can we trigger uh, let me go back so in my environment I have created this task flow okay so we are going to see how can we trigger this task flow using the API like uh, in older environment like in case of power center we used to use PMCMD start workflow command right so in batch script we used to call that particular workflow now when it comes to IICS instead of having that PMCMD command they have given the provision to call these uh, task flows uh, using APIs okay so in next video we are going to see how can we use API in order to call these task flows Okay. So thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video.